So what is going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another video on the channel where today we are going to be talking about whether Origins is overrated. This map for the longest time was one of my favourites, it could have been at number one. For me it was always between Mob of the Dead and Origins. That was until Derise of Draco came around and more time passed. But for a lot of people Origins is their number one. People regard this as one of the best maps we have ever had. And then a lot of people also say it's overrated. It's a good map but it's not as good as the community says and that's kind of the path i've taken over the past few years as we've had bo3 and bo4 and time has passed since we had origins i also think i overrated this map as well and to be honest in my opinion it's gone from being one of my favorites to sometimes infuriating me when i play it so i thought you know what i've seen a lot of people lately saying that it is an overrated map and so i thought i'd make a video to try and see why this is is Origins overrated? Or not, is it still as good as people say? So this was DLC 4, our final map for Black Ops 2 Zombies, our conclusion to the zombie storyline, and most importantly, one of the biggest cliffhangers we have ever had. Since it was DLC 4, when you finally completed the main easter egg, and we saw that ending cutscene for the first time, it left all of us wondering what it really meant. Some of us thought it was terrible, because it seemed to mean that the whole zombie storyline was made up by these two children. Samantha and Eddie. We were just playing in their heads this whole time. We were playing as action figures by them. We were just a game. That was the most popular idea of what we thought it meant. Of course, later on it was revealed to be totally different, but the ending cutscene definitely didn't go down too well. Besides from that, it was also the difficulty. Origins is definitely not an easy map. If you combine with how tight the trenches are, and then even when you go to the more open areas, it is filled with mud, meaning it's harder to manoeuvre around. Origins really doesn't have any easy training spots. There are big open areas, but like I said, you're either going to get stuck in the mud, or you have to be very specific where you tread, unless you're jumping around everywhere. Plus the fact that at the time, this was a pretty big map. Yes, we had transit not too long before, but all of the other maps compared to this were relatively smaller, or around the same size. Origins was definitely a bigger map, and all of the main objectives, such as the 115 generators, or parts, the mystery box moving about, perk machines, everything was spread out, and since the generators could be disabled by the Templar Knights, it meant that you were running around Origins an awful lot, going back and forth, which could not only get a little bit annoying, but also would be very difficult just because of how hard it is to move around. The mud, combined with zombie spawns, definitely doesn't help. And of course, another thing, or shall I say, three things to stop you moving about were the giant robots. These guys could come in at any time, whether it was one, two, or three of them, and tread in random places on the map. You always had to be wary of where you were going. You couldn't really stay in one area, because the best training spots were usually taken up by the robots. So you always had to be on the lookout of when a robot was coming in. This definitely didn't help when trying to fill up a soul box. You'd be halfway through filling one of these in and then a giant robot would come and tread on it and disrupt you although i wouldn't say the robots are actually a negative i think they were really fun they were super cool at the time to see something like this especially on the older consoles on the 360 on a zombies map which still at the time in bo2 you could say was a relatively small game mode it definitely hadn't taken off like it did in bo3 to see giant robots on a zombies map at the time was incredible and even though they could be annoying they are one of my favorite things about origins just to think that back in 1918 world war one these robots were created by german scientists there are plenty of positives to origins but i just want to continue talking about the negatives first and i think another one of those could be the panzer whilst we're still on the topic of difficulty and availability to maneuver around the map the panzer was yet another one of the many things that would stop you from doing it a lot of the maps that we had previously we were able to really go where we wanted there was nothing that blocked off our path there was nothing that would really get in the way besides from you know a zombie but origins had 
plenty of them. And the Panzer Soldat was yet another. A boss that could really spawn in on a random round. He was essentially a zombie inside of a mechanical suit. Another product of Group 935s. In Origins, as we know, there were two different versions of him. He was later brought back in Dreisendrache. But in this map, his suit had a built-in flamethrower. And on the other arm, he had a claw. Combining that with his ability to fly and how fast he was, because he could definitely keep up with you, he was <sighs> very annoying. I hate calling a lot of things on this map annoying because it is a cool map, but I honestly do think its difficulty and how hard it is to move around is its biggest drawback. I think if we got rid of the mud, changed a few spawns around, and maybe reduced the amount of panzers, it'd improve this map a hell of a lot. But getting back to the panzer, he would randomly fly into a spot. If you were running in that area, you'd have to trap back and go a different way, usually because of the mud slowing you down, making it difficult to turn. You'd have to get a good distance away from him before you can take a good few shots at him. He's not an easy boss to take down, and if you were close or in his line of sight, he could extend his claw, drag you in, and then kill you with his flamethrower. It also wasn't easy to escape from him, so as I'm sure you know if you've played this map or you've ever come face to face with this guy, in no way is he an easy enemy. And that for me has got to be the biggest drawback of Origins. In reality, it's not a lot of things that are bad with it but that is for me as i said this is all in my opinion you guys could think totally different but the biggest annoyance about this is the map in general whether it's the layout the mud i guess you could say which makes everything 10 times more difficult i mean it is what it is it does make it a one of a kind but there are also a lot of good things. One of my favourites are the wonder weapons or the elemental staffs. This was the first time, if I remember correctly, that we had four wonder weapons. Usually in the past we'd be fighting about who's gonna get the wonder weapon in the map. Everyone wanted it, whereas in this game we had four and each were relatively as good as the other in certain situations. There was the staff of lightning, the staff of fire, ice and wind. Let me know in the comment section below which out of the four was your favourite, which you think is the best. But the wonder weapons were really cool and unique. Also, this was the first time that we were introduced to the Origins or Primus characters. We'd gone from the OG crew of Takio, Nikolai and Dempsey to playing as the transit crew for a long time throughout Green Run, Die Rise and Buried. We thought we were never going to see Riptoffen and the crew again. And then all of a sudden, the Origins intro releases. And we see we are now playing as the crew again, but this time they are younger. This was the first time we played as them. They felt fresh, but also the same, and have probably gone on to be the best characters we've had. At least they're my favourites. So Origins was the first time we played as them, and whilst I'm also talking about that, the intro was really cool. Remember? At this point, we'd had zombies for years. I can't remember specifically how long, but it must have been about five or six years, and the intro showed Dr. Maxis for the first time. We'd never actually seen him before. We'd heard from him all the way back in World at War. He was a main character, but we'd never seen him. And then of course we learnt in the intro that Richtofen actually lobotomized him. He killed him, took out his brain, and that's where all of the characters met for the first time on the battlefield. Origins also introduced dig spots, which have been brought back into maps like Shadows of Evil with the pods or the plants in Zetsu Benoshima. I feel like there was more maps, but off my head, I can't remember. The dig spots were interesting. You could get grenades, zombies, weapons, parts for the staffs. They were another interesting way of mixing things up, which Origins did a very good job at. As I said earlier, the 115 generators, although could be annoying, it was another good way of changing things up. Instead of just the usual power switch, we would have six generators that would power up separate areas. Talking about power ups, there was a new one called Zombie Blood, which would allow us to get away from the zombies for a short amount of time. It would turn us into a zombie, but would be very useful and was also a major part of the easter egg but that wasn't the only new one there was also blood money which would give you bonus points and you could also get the empty perk bottle there was loads of buildables around this map whether it was the zombie shield or the maxis drone i feel like i should also bring up the fact that there was a different way to move around the map since i've said that the maneuverability was my biggest issue there was a tank that you could take but the only problem with it is you had to go to the station where it ended purchase it and then ride it from there i feel like it would have been more useful if it worked like the transit bus but you had to go to a certain spot and then take it to a different 
destination. And also it didn't stop where you wanted it to. You'd have to jump off and try and jump back on if you could. But that was an option. And then the final few things I should talk about is one, always the Pack-a-Punch machine. It was really easy to do, just power up the generators. Also, while I remember, shout out to the mystery box. That was super cool. But finally, the Easter egg. As always, it's one of the biggest things in our maps. It was not an easy Easter egg to do. I don't think it's the most fun one we've ever had. And then considering the ending we got, although now it makes sense at the time, I mean, definitely wasn't fun and i've had a lot of nightmares with it but you could get some cool things such as the iron fists upgrading the staffs was part of it and some other things but i will say the easter egg definitely not up there for me and then talking about easter eggs there's a load of small ones on this map such as the jump scare um it's not not very scary but you know it's there there are a few ciphers and scrap papers there is plenty to do but going back to the title of this video is origins overrated with all things considered with this at one time being one of my favorite maps now over time is it an overrated map i don't know that's a hard one to answer a lot of people say it is but for a lot of people it's also one of their favorite maps you could say it's overrated but i think if that was the case it'd have to be a bad map and it's not it's just got a few big drawbacks that stop it for me being at the top so i'll leave this one to you guys what do you think but anyway there we go that is it that is it for today's video as always hopefully you have enjoyed if you have you know what to do drop a like rating if you want to make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one until then goodbye